Hi everyone, COM 209 here, chapter one. I wanna give just a quick lesson on communication competence. This is really a brief overview of the chapter and just a few slides to get you thinking. I'd like you to watch this video and come prepared on Wednesday to have a brief discussion about some of the key components. So one thing that's important when we look to understand the nature of communication is really how culture, gender, and um, other er components of diversity affect our interaction with each other. When we talk about communication, I think it's also important to identify what is considered a group. So from a scientific perspective, we might say that a group is composed of three or more individuals. Uh, two people, which form a dyad, is referred to as interpersonal communication. And when you're part of a larger group of more than three, um, then let's say 10, it would be considered a, a large group. So small group communication, while still is dyadic in nature, it overall really relates to um, being composed of three or more people. So one thing you did in the personal inventory is already talked a little bit about what groups you're part of, um, what you like about working in groups, and what are some of those challenges. So I'll take a look at your comments to learn more about your own perspective, but actually that's something that you've already completed. So we'll move on. Taking a look at cultural preferences, and this will be a good example of seeing whether or not you have a textbook with page numbers. I know sometimes the electronic books are not, but on page 20 of the printed text, um, there's a self-assessment. It's called Be Ye Individualistic or Collectivist. And what it does is it walks through that process of looking at your orientation toward working in groups. So I'd like you to complete that and decide kind of where are you on that spectrum. And it's not a dichotomous either or, you might be kind of both and, but think through a little bit of how does that uh, affect how you engage with others. Those that tend to be uh, really tied toward individualism are rewarded for individual achievement versus those that come from a collective culture where what is best for the group is something that is, is best for me. So consider your cultural perspective. I think that has a lot to do with how you approach group dynamics and something that um, I think comes into play, especially as uh, as we go forward in the class. So looking at communication competence, there are really two key components. One is effectiveness and the other is appropriateness. So let's, uh, Spitzberg and Cuppick are the researchers that kind of coined this phrase. When we look at effectiveness, what we're going to be looking at is our progress toward achieving a goal. And appropriateness is compliance with the rules and expectations given the interaction context. So if you can imagine, sometimes people use whatever they can to reach a goal. That's not always effective if in fact it's not appropriate for that particular situation. So as you consider what is effective and appropriate, um, there are a number of different components that come into play. So think of an example when you were expected to behave in a particular manner in order to achieve a goal, and then how did you adapt your communication to that specific situation? One comes to mind if you think back to uh, being a child playing on the playground. You know, maybe you got the ball and ran and did whatever tagged somebody um, to win the game, but if you ripped it out of somebody's hands, that might not have been the appropriate way to achieve the goal. And after that child went and cried to the teacher on duty, uh, and you were told that that's not fair, um, you learned what is appropriate given a particular interaction. So when we talk about achieving competence, we've got a number of key components, and these are the components I want you to consider reading through in the text, and then we're going to apply to a particular uh, video application. Uh, considering knowledge, what are the rules, and learning those rules that contributes to competence. Um, skills, being able to show how you can demonstrate competence, not just knowing. And sensitivity, are you attending to the message? Are you empathic? Are you listening to maybe where the other person is coming from or those people in your group? And then commitment, what is that passion toward excellence? So you're not able to see it right here, but this is a clip 
maybe just three or four minutes from uh, the movie Tommy Boy. And what I've got right here is a link to the video. Um, I've opened hovered over the, the actual URL. So if for some reason you're not able to click on the link in my recording, you can get to the URL. But I want you to watch this particular video and then uh, we'll answer just a few questions. So this is the last slide just to wrap up. Um, we're gonna be discussing communication competence at the beginning of the class next week. So I'd like you to bring your notes. How did those different components um, uh, apply in that uh, in that video example and then also let's talk about whether or not um, communication competence uh, is a necessity right is it ever um, does it ever necessitate us to be dishonest and what are those circumstances when a me orientation versus a we orientation becomes necessary in group work so just to wrap up, what we're doing here is just framing our understanding of what is group communication and then what do we mean when we talk about communication competence. Just make a few notes and bring them to class with you next week. Thanks.